Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the ACC and how they could just be staring down the end of their conference. Uh, it definitely will be a very interesting thing to watch, but let's get into UGA and talk about is this the best team in Kirby Smart's era during at UGA and I apologize, we were having some technical difficulties. The things that I tried to update yesterday for the show did not update, so we have a little bit of a trouble uh, here, but I promise I will get that fixed by tomorrow, and we, we should have no problems moving forward. But we're going to start with that guy, and at least we have some of the stuff. We will not have the lower thirds, but promise that will be totally fixed. But let's jump in, and Kirby Smart has had some ridiculous teams at UGA, and frankly, I used this picture just because I thought it was funny more than anything else, but UGA obviously has had just ridiculous teams during Kirby Smart's time. They've won two titles, they've done things on the defensive side of the ball that have been historic in every single sense of the word, and I look at this team a little bit differently, and I look at this team, frankly, as the best team that he's had at UGA, and I know that sounds a little bit far-fetched, and there are a ton of teams, including the 2021 team that I believe every single defensive player is currently playing in the NFL. That's going to be tough to beat. There's no two ways about that, but there's this one thing that I think separates this team from every other Kirby Smart team. And that's this offense. I think it's totally different than it's been in years past. And I think the guy calling the shots is the best that he's had there in quite some time. Carson Beck is an absolute beast. He does things on the football field that are, frankly, unfair. Um, I've seen this kid make passes that are just mesmerizing. He makes NFL throws on a daily basis. Like, he could roll out of bed at 3 a.m. and make a uh, out... Uh, excuse me, throw a post to the corner of the end zone and throw it on a dime. The dude is absolutely incredible uh, in the pocket. And one of the things that Kirby Smart said, which we'll get to here in a little bit, but he said, this is the best O-line he's had at UGA. If that's the case, and this guy can just sit back there and pick apart defenses, everyone else is screwed. I'm just being totally honest. There's not a defense in the country that can stop this kid if he has the amount of time that Kirby Smart expects him to have in this uh, offense. So it, that's a ridiculous addition. Trevor Etienne is another one that's absolutely out of this world. You added him from, him from Florida. That will add a little bit of juice to that game. But also, that always been an elite position at Georgia. And frankly, this is not quite the level of some other groups that uh, Kirby has had. But you have Trevor Etienne, you have Roderick Robinson, you have Branson Robinson hopefully coming back from injury pretty quickly and um, being able to get on the field. They'll be more than fine at that position is mainly the point here. I think that one is one that I'm not worried about at all, if I'm being totally honest. Um, and then the wide receivers is the difference maker. The wide receivers and tight ends is where I think the gap starts to form because UGA has had really good receivers. Lad McConkey was just incredible uh, for a couple of years there at UGA, but when I look at this UGA roster, I'm not lying. I think there's seven or eight guys that actually could go for 100 yards in a game this year. I do think there are those people that across the board, you have Dominic Lovett obviously is going to be likely the leading receiver in this group. You have Ra Ra Thomas, you have Colby Young coming in from Miami. You have so many other, London Humphreys coming in from Vandy, Dylan Bell. It's just ridiculous the amount of guys that they have to play around with. And that doesn't even include my favorite guy of the bunch, which is Anthony Evans. I think he is an absolute monster and someone that is going to win Georgia a game with a punt return or a deep play or whatever it is sometime this season. So it's ridiculous what they have there, but the tight end room is another one that is always good. They're just always, Todd Hartley is one of the best position coaches in the entire country, and he's got a really good group again. Oscar Delp is leading the way in my eyes, but Ben Urasek is going to have a huge uh, role in this uh, offense because Mike Bobo likes his tight ends. And then Lawson Lucky, I think, likely will get on the field a little bit more often this upcoming season. So, frankly, I could easily make the argument this tight end room is stronger than a year ago. Even without Brock Bowers, I understand that is the biggest loss they possibly could have had because if you were to ask me, that is the best tight end I've ever seen in college football. But when you add someone like Eurosec, when Delp gets a year, a year older, when Lawson Lucky gets a year older, when you add someone, um, oh, I'm blanking on the kid's name, Jason Rydell, who's a fantastic freshman, it feels like this group is just a little bit more well-rounded and a little bit more experienced than the year uh, past. And although you don't have the just monster that Brock Bowers was, I think this tight end room didn't take the step back that some people might think that it did. Um, and then the O-line, 
We talked about it. It's the best that Kirby Smart has seen during his time, and he knows something about good O-lines. But Tate Ratledge was the big thing here. He easily could have gone to the NFL, easily could have gotten drafted in the second or third round, and likely would have been, I don't want to say a starter right away, but would have started pretty quickly at the NFL level. That's how good this kid is. But he decided to come back. You add that to Dylan Fairchild, another one of the best guards in the country. Xavier Truss and Ernest Green on the corners are just out of this world. And then Jared Curtis steps in for Cedric Van Pran at center. But the reality is... Jared Curtis might be the most popular guy among that coaching staff right now. He is so athletic, so good, and is stepping into that position, and they might just not skip a beat at that position, and Cedric Van Pran was darn good. Um, but let's move on to the defense, and we did lose some of the slides here, so it'll be a little bit less visual in this one, but uh, the 2021... Uh, 2021 and 22 defenses were all time. They they were absolutely out of this world. They were incredible in every sense of the word. This one's a little bit different. It's not quite as strong as the ones in the past, but they still have dudes and they're still going to be one of the best in the country. Nazir Stackhouse is the guy I want to talk about. That's him running back a pick six from a year ago against Missouri. That was just awesome to watch. But you have Nazir Stackhouse, you have Warren Brinson, Christian Miller, Xavier McCloyd in the interior, which is where you kind of are worried. But I think between those four guys, you're going to have plenty of disruption in the interior. And then Michael Williams. I think he's a top 15, 20 player in the country. He is an absolute beast on the outside. Chaz Chambliss is someone that UGA fans have a little bit of a mixed opinion on, I've found, but I do think this is a very, very smart player that only gets better with time and is just going to be in the right spot. He's not going to have to make those really crazy athletic plays that, you know, Michael Williams or Jalen Walker can make, but he just needs to be in the right place and make the right tackle at the right time. So I think that's something that he absolutely can do, and it'll be really, really awesome to watch him develop. And then you add in guys like Jalen Walker, Damon Wilson, Ingram Dawkins, all of those guys coming off the edge, they're going to be very disruptive. And then the linebacker room is the other one that has kind of defined UGA under Kirby Smart and even before that. And CJ, or, or excuse me, I apologize, that's Michael Williams right there. I should have talked about him a little bit more. He's someone that is an absolute disruptor, possibly the best player on this team. And that's where my pictures end, so I apologize for that. But the linebacker room is ridiculous. Uh, CJ Allen is a Roquan Smith level player. I truly believe he is out of this world, one of those players that can totally transform that position. Add him in to Smile Mondin, who could be missing time. Kirby Smart did say there would be suspensions for the uh, incidents that happened last week, so we'll see what happens there. But Raylan Wilson is elite. Samuel and Pemba's coming in, who I think is just going to be out of this world good. And then Jalen Walker will play some linebacker in Troy Bowles. It's just insane the depth they have at that position. And then you go to the back end, and Malachi Starks is the guy. He's the one that everyone is going to point to. He's the best coverage safety in the country, if you were to ask me. And then you have Ja'Cory Thomas stepping into a big-time position. Going to need him to play big. And then you have uh, John, uh, Johnny Aliguero also stepping into a big-time position in that back end. Both of them are going to have to step up huge because... John Aliguero has taken over for one of the most important guys over the last couple of years for Georgia and Javon Bullard. So that'll be really, really fun to watch. And definitely the back end is has a little bit of worry, but I, I think they're going to be more than fine. And the corners are really where the worry kind of sets in a little bit more aggressively. Julian Humphrey and Dalen Everett will be the starters at corner. And I think both of them are very, very good players. Julian Humphrey is one of those guys that I think has only started to scratch the ceiling of what he can be because the athleticism is just off the charts insane. Once those ball skills and some of the physicality comes along a little bit further, he's going to be in just out of this world. And then Daniel Harris will play tons. Ellis Robinson, the freshman, I think will get some spots. So I think cornerback uh, position is going to be a huge hinge spot. Can they play the coverage they need to play against some just ridiculous wide receivers that they're going to face? I tend to believe they're going to be able to do that, but maybe there's a couple of uh, moments where Georgia just gets taken advantage of on the back end. And then you add in a guy like Peyton Woodring, who's one of the best kickers in the country, and Bet Brett Thorson, who is one of my favorite players in the country just because of the off-the-field antics. He's just so much fun. I absolutely love his Twitter. He's just really one of those guys that if you don't know about him, learn about him pretty quickly because he's really, really funny. Um, but at the end of the day, UGA is turning into an absolute powerhouse. They're going to be really, really elite until further notice. There's no two ways about that. They will have elite players. They will have probably the best roster in the country for quite some time to come. Ohio State kind of stole that from them this year, but 
if the normal people that were meant to leave from Ohio State actually did, UGA would be the most talented. And I think that's going to be the case for quite some time. But when I look at this team, it's just different than other Kirby Smarts teams. I think it fits together better than some other teams did. I think having that best O-line and best wide receivers, along with what I would argue is the best quarterback he's had during his time. Don't get me wrong, Stetson Bennett is out of this world and someone that I think, uh, frankly, Carson Beck cannot jump in terms of UGA quarterback rankings this year. But from a pure football perspective, I think he's the better player. And then you look at the uh, defensive side, and I think they just have a slew of pass rushers that are going to be incredible. And then you add that into C.J. Allen and Malachi Starks that are all-American level players, it's just going to be ridiculous. And the cool thing about this is I said all of that, and I believe all of that, that this is Kirby Smart's best team. This is one of his most talented teams. This is one of his most scary teams for a number of different reasons, mostly because of the way that it fits together. I don't think that makes them your outright national title winner. I don't think that absolutely guarantees them a title because I think this is Ryan Day's best Ohio State team. I think it's Dan Lanning's best Oregon team. I think it's Steve Sarkeesian's best Texas team. So I do think there is this energy around Georgia that is a little bit different. I think they're stronger than they have been in past, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But everyone else is too. So they're going to be battling with some really good teams. And that's another reason why I'm so excited for this season because it feels like no one's above anyone else, and everyone is really good on top of that. So those four teams are obviously the ones kind of setting the pace, and I think it's going to be really, really interesting to watch them develop because it's going to be fascinating to see if this is the best team that Kirby's ever had and if that kind of shows itself throughout the season or another one of these best teams that Kirby uh, that uh, Ryan Day or that Dan Lanning or that Steve Sarkeesian's ever had could throw a wrench into that. But let's take our second break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about horns down. This is a conversation that frankly has become a little bit exhausting in college football, but it came up in SEC media days. So I'll break down my thoughts and why I just don't understand why anyone cares. But at the end of the day, we'll break that down right after this. <laughs> 